do. I hope you're well. Now, Mrs James has asked me to do a really important job for her. While she's busy in school working out a way which we can all keep, keep safe, she's asked me to read the next part of the Poppet story. Can you remember what's happened so far? That's right. Poppet met Mormo the mouse. At first, Poppet was a little bit frightened because Uma, Poppet's mummy, said that a mouse would definitely run up his trunk. But Mormo didn't do that. They decided to be friends instead. But Poppet's mummy was a bit angry and tried to stamp on Mormo. But luckily, Mormo ducked under the earth and survived. So Mormo and Poppet decided to be best of friends. Let's find out what happens next in chapter seven. Meanwhile, Uma was telling the aunties about her naughty child. One of the first things I told him, she said, was to keep away from mice. We all know that every mouse is just waiting for a chance to run up the inside of our trunks. We do, said the aunties. And no doubt you all gave your kids the same warning. We did, said the aunties. And what have I just found? Only my boy with the tip of his trunk right beside a mouse. That's all. I told him off, I can tell you. No doubt you'd have done the same. We would, said the aunties. Children, said Uma. They just don't listen. And there they are. All the aunties together. Grown-ups, said Poppet to Mormo about the same time. They don't treat children fairly. Grown-ups don't. I could have explained to Mum if she'd let me. I could have told her, you're wrong. Mice don't run up elephants' trunks, I know. My friend told me, but no, I never got the chance. She just yelled at me. I heard it, said Mormo. Let's just hope we're more understanding when we're grown-ups, said Poppet. Actually, said Mormo, I'm grown-up already. Oh, sorry. I didn't realise. You're so, um, what do you think Poppet is thinking? Mormo's so small. Well, yes. Tell you what, Poppet, said the mouse. Do you agree that it would be a good thing if elephants stopped being frightened of mice? Yes, I do. And do you agree that it would be a good thing if elephants stopped trying to squash mice? Oh, yes, I do. There they are having their talk together. Right then, this is my plan. Listen carefully. And so it was later that day when the herd had been down to the river to bathe and the elephants were all standing in the shade, resting. Poppet said to Uma, Mum, Will you promise not to tell me, not to yell at me if I tell you something? Of course I won't, said Uma, who was already feeling a little bit ashamed of losing her temper with the little one. Of course you won't, promise. No, of course I won't yell at you. All right then, said Poppet. It's this. Mice do not run up, run up the inside of elephants' trunks. They never have and they never will. Uma snorted. Come and listen to this, she called to the aunties. And when they had all gathered round, she made Poppet repeat his words. Silly boy, said one auntie, and stupid child, said another. And a third said, you had a narrow escape this morning. You might not be so lucky another time. Oh dear. Wait here, please, said Poppet, and he disappeared into the bushes. When he emerged again, Uma and the aunties could see that he was holding something in the tip of his trunk. Something furry and brown with large tulip-shaped ears, beady black eyes and a longish, hairless tail. What do you think it is? A mouse! And there's Poppet and Mormo together. Chapter 8. How horrified they all were. 
They formed a circle around Poppet, their trunks held high. Can you tell your grown-up why were all the aunties and Uma holding their trunks up high? They were hold their, hold their trunks with their trunks held high out of reach of the dreaded creature. And they shifted anxiously from foot to foot, fanning their great ears. Poppet put the mouse carefully down upon the ground. There's Mormo and Poppet together. Mormo doesn't look scary. This is Mormo. He said, uh, he said to Umar and the aunties, my friend, like I told you, mum, I know I am only a child, but Mormo is a grown up, even though you may think he's not grown very far. However, he has a grown up brain. I can tell you, and he wishes to address you all. If you'll be kind enough to listen to him. So astonished were the elephants, First to see Poppet carrying the mouse and then to hear him make such a speech that they stopped fidgeting and stood silent except for their rumbling, the rumbling of their tummies which they couldn't help. Mormo sat up on his hunkers. Ladies, he said, it is a great privilege to be allowed to speak to you. And he turned to face Uma. Especially you, madame, the mother of a truly remarkable child. Look, there's Mormo speaking to all of the elephants. So brave. Elephants can't blush, but if Uma could have done, she would have done. Puppet, the mouse went on, is a name that all elephants will remember for a long time. Since it, since it is he, with a little help from myself, who has been the first of his kind to discover that mice do not, never have, and never will, run up the inside of elephants' trunks. I call upon him now to conclude this historic day by offering to all of you the proof of what have I, I have just said so that none of you here, indeed none of your kind throughout the length and breadth of Africa, need ever again worry about meeting a mouse, trunk to face. Now, Poppet, say your piece. Mum, said Poppet, do you love me? Oh yes, Poppet, said Uma, would you do anything for me? Oh, yes. Then uncurl your trunk and stretch out the tip of it to Mormo. Oh, no, Puppet, I couldn't. Courage, madame, said Mormo. While all the aunties cried, go on, Uma. Safe in the knowledge that they didn't have to do it. It'll be all right, mum, said Puppet, honest. So... Very slowly, with her eyes tight shut, Uma uncoiled her trunk. You can see Poppet and Uma there. They have to trust each other in this time, don't they? So Uma uncoiled her trunk and laid the tip of it on the ground right beside the mouse. Mormo peered up it carefully, remembering Poppet's sneeze, not to touch it with his whiskers. Yuck, he said softly. Then he said to Uma, thank you, madame. I appreciate your confidence and your courage. And I am filled with admiration for the undoubtedly beauty, strength and dexterity of your magnificent nasal appendage. I hope, however, that you will forgive me if I say that nothing this world could ever persuade me to creep up your trunk. I had a job to keep it as straight, uh, sorry, I had a job to keep a straight face, said Mormo, when the 
herd had moved away, shaking their great heads in wonder at what they had just seen and heard. Umar especially seemed quite overcome by what had happened. And when Poppet said to her, Mum, can I stay and play with Mormo? She answered, yes, of course, dear, as though hypnotised. I wonder, can you tell your grown-up, what does hypnotised mean? When they were alone, Poppet said, what shall we play? Can you think of a game? Yes, said Mormo. Put down your trunk and I'll run up it. Oh no, cried Poppet. You mean it's true after all, what Mum told me, and I thought you were my friend? I am, said Mormo. Don't get your trunk in a twist. I just want to run up the outside. <laughs> and there they are, Mormo and Poppet at the end. He must have run up the outside of Poppet's trunk to sit on his head. Mm. Oh, what a lovely story. I hope you enjoyed that one. See you again soon. Bye.